Hello, everybody. I'm back with a little bit more encouragement. Um, so a couple of weeks ago, I had a dream and I just have been, uh, just for my own, you know, revelation, just really been soaking on it. And the Lord's just been hitting me left and right um, with things that have really just shifted um, me in the way that um, I really see and um, and hear things and um, the way that I've been looking at situations, um, not just for myself, but for other people. Um, so as I began to unpack that um, and just really kind of soak in it, I really felt pressed to um, share some of that with you guys um, in order to encourage you. I really feel like we are just in this moment um, where things are trying to shift and change, um, but a lot of us have been just kind of worn down um, this first six months of this year has been brutal for some of us. I don't know about you, but it has been for me. <laughs> um, just being real. And um, and it's like every time I start feeling kind of bogged down, you know, the Lord comes in and, he, you know, he gives me a new dream that just encourages and just, you know, adds another weapon into my arsenal um, to really see things, you know, come to pass, to do my part, right? Because with every prophetic word, every prophetic promise, there comes action that um, you have to do. Sometimes that action is to shut up and sit down. So just saying, you need to find out what that action is. But there's only something that needs to be done, right? With that prophetic word, with that promise. And um, I really just wanted to come share that dream with you, share some of the revelation that I've gotten out of it. Um, but I first wanted to talk to you, um, there's a fairly popular movie, it's called Groundhog Day, and, and I've always just kind of, you know, tongue-in-cheek joked about, you know, life being like Groundhog Day, and the other day I was, um, just kind of, you know, running my mouth like sometimes we do, and all of a sudden it was just kind of like this veil, um, was lifted, and the revelation just hit me. And, you know, if you remember the movie, you know, this, his day was on repeat. <laughs> the same day, he was living the same day over and over and over. And, and for me, routine and, you know, the same thing over and over again drives me crazy. I don't like the same thing over and over again. I love new things. I love, you know, unplanned, sporadic, spontaneous stuff, you know. So to be put in a place where my days were on repeat was just like, I was totally like the character in the movie. I was just getting mad and, you know, in the movie, you know, he's stepping in front of trucks and he's driving off of cliffs and he's throwing toasters in the in the bathtub. And, and when the veil kind of lifted for me and that revelation hit, it was like, oh my gosh, that's what I was doing for, you know, the first few years. I was just griping and complaining and blah, blah, blah. And I was doing that. I was, you know, kind of behaving that way. I'm just like, okay, I just don't want to live. I don't want to deal with this day today. So I'm just going to throw a toaster in the bathtub kind of thing. And, and then at some point, you know, his his attitude shifts in the movie and he begins to settle in to that daily grind and he begins to learn about the people of the town and he begins to learn how to play piano and he begins to do this and this and this. He finds a satisfaction and a connection in that routine. I'm telling you. And there are a lot of us out there where we have been so frustrated with the same old thing, the same problem facing us every day. Now, the problem that kept that character in that town in the day repeating was a blizzard, right? And, and it was like it didn't change for him until his attitude changed, till he stopped speaking that hate and blah, blah, blah. And and I just, I really felt that that revelation was really important. It kind of was like, oh yeah, that's, that's, that has been my life. I was doing this and now I've done this. I've settled in and I, you know, I've asked the Lord, like, how do you want to use me in this moment? How do you want me to, you know, learn and, and see and hear 
in my daily routine, in my Groundhog Day. I've embraced it now. And now I just felt like he was saying, you know, but at some point, you know, in that contentment, he laid his head on the pillow that night and the next day he woke up, new day. And I really felt like that is where we are at right now. And I really felt like those who are really looking and listening, the Lord is going to give you a key to just unlock that because you have come to a place of just settling in surrender, settling in the place that he's had you um, in this past season. You've just embraced the the routine um, that he's now going to show you what your new day is going to look like. Okay. Now, this dream that I had back on the 11th, just, just follow with me. Okay. So I was back in the 1700s and I ran into this office and I was with two other ladies and I was in there with purpose. Now everybody was like panicked and, and kind of rushing around. Like it was really feeling like things were just on a time crunch. Um, but I was very calm and I knew what I was in there to get. And I walked over to the desk and I said, I have to get these envelopes. Okay. So I picked up three envelopes but I was not rushed and I sat down and I began to open these envelopes. The first envelope was very large and as I opened it up, it was a financial ledger, you know, very old financial ledger. And I began to see names like Ben Franklin and um, George Washington. But as I was looking at them, I'm like, these are illegal transactions. This isn't right, this isn't right. Okay, then I jumped to the next envelope and it was an invitation. It was very fancy. It was a bit like a formal uh, party invitation. Um, and then the third em um, envelope was a key. Now, when I opened this up and dumped the key into my hand, I knew what that key went to. And so I walked over and I ripped up this big old area rug and in the floor was a keyhole. And so I shoved the key in there, opened it up and this, you know, opened up this big old door and there was jewelry and treasure within there. You know, it was just all of these different jewelry pieces of from, but it wasn't just from the 1700s. It was from 1800s and late 1800s and early 1900s. And so, I mean, you think about the different fashion changes over those, you know, decades. Um, each of those represented in that treasure box. And so um, as I was looking at it, I noticed this one ring and, um, you know, it was, you know, kind of a, um, recording when the kids are home, always good. <laughs> so anyway, so I saw this particular ring and, um, and I looked at it and I said, you know what, that, that's mine. That's a part of my inheritance. So I grabbed it and I put it on my finger and then I said, okay, now we got to go. Now it's time to go. And so as I was running out the door, the other two women that were with me, they ran back and hid in the closet. So I left. And as I left, I got into a car, 1700s. Now I'm in a late 1960s muscle car and drove off. And that was the dream. Okay. So when I woke up, I was just kind of like, that was really strange. <laughs> But I went ahead and wrote it down and I let the Lord just kind of unpack that for me. And I just was beginning to ask him, what does this mean? What do these things stand for? What, you know, what do I need to get out of this? What are you trying to say? So the first thing, the times, the, the, the time eras, I really felt like right now is the time that the Lord is really opening up revelation. He's opening up our eyes. He's opened up our ears to go back and see um, past generations and things that were done wrong so that we can speak to that thing and make it right, make it right on our behalf. Because our Heavenly Father is not only multi-purposed, multi-faceted, He is also multi-generational. And He wants nothing more than to see our past generations justice come but justice to come to us in our generation and justice to be carried forth into the future generations, right? Um, the key, he gave me the key. We are the keys right now in this moment to unlock the treasure. We are given the mouth and the eyes and the ears to speak to the past, 
to bring justice, you know, have the Lord bring justice to it, but then also using us to unlock that inheritance. I'm not just talking finance. I'm talking about everything, everything that we were to inherit, all of the things that our past generations didn't walk in, um, mantles that were laid down, all of those are being brought back to us. And we are the keys that he's using to unlock right now in this moment. Now, I was really puzzled about the party invitation. And then suddenly he said, it, you know, it was very, um, it was a very um, exclusive party invitation. And I really felt like this party invitation was exclusively given to those who are willing to look, to seek out, and to hear what the Lord is saying in your situation and in for other people's situations. And this party invitation is breakthrough. It is a breakthrough invitation. He is, I, I just feel like his heart is just aching to see all of us break through all of these long standing problems, all of these long standing things that just have felt like they have been on repeat, like Groundhog Day. I can't seem to shake. Um, this thing off. I can't seem to break through this thing. This is constantly harassing me. This is constantly in lack. This is constantly like I'm not getting my healing kind of thing. And I really felt like he is saying, here's your invitation. I'm showing you what went wrong. I'm showing you where to go back to speak to that thing. And you are the key to unlock it. I really just, I've, I just, he wants all of us stepping forward into this new thing, stepping forward free, stepping forward in favor, stepping forward healed, healthy, whole, blessed, victorious. He wants that for every single one of us. I just, I really felt like I needed to declare that over you. Um, now, sometimes the Lord loves to show me um, things with uh, numbers, and I call those my little heavenly winks, right? Um, so knowing that I had it on the 11th and I began to get all of this revelation, um, from the scriptures on the 22nd, I'm like, okay, that's gotta be something. Right. And so he took me to Isaiah chapter 60 and verse, um, I'm going to read it from my Bible here. Verse 11 says, your gates will always stand open. They will never be shut day or night so that men may bring you the wealth of the nations. Their kings led in triumphal procession. Inheritance unlocked. <laughs> Victory procession, right? And then in verse 22, I'm telling you, some of you don't have a very high opinion of yourself. Some of you don't think that you have... Um, enough power in your voice. Some of you think that you're just little old me and can't do, not, can't do anything to change situations or circumstances or relationships or whatever. I'm here to tell you, you are. And verse 22 says the same thing too. The least of you will become a thousand. The smallest, a mighty nation. I am the Lord. In its time, I will do this swiftly. I'm telling you, he is wanting to move, move at a rapid pace, exponential rate. <laughs> and um, I just really felt like this was kind of a call to action, a call to really pick up your sword. And, and he led me to um, Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. And I really felt like he was saying, it's time. Right now, it's time. It's time to do that prayer. It's time to do that intercession. It's time to do that fasting. It's time to take that thing to the courts of heaven. I'm telling you, you ask the Lord what you are supposed to do, the action that needs to be taken on each circumstance that you're fighting over. He will give you instructions and blueprints because he wants your breakthrough more than you want it. Anyway. I just wanted to uh, share that with you. I'm going to leave you with one more scripture, and that is Hebrews 12, verse 22. 22 again. You know, twos are, you know, open doors and double doors of favor. Um, you know, it's also uh, authority to take new ground. Hello. 
So Isaiah, um, Hebrew 12, verse 22 through 24. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. You have, go- you have come to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, us, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and for the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. I'm telling you right now, the blood of Jesus will speak to that situation for you. You just need to say, hey, let the blood of Jesus speak to this situation and make all wrongs done right and bring that favor over us now in this moment. So I wanted to try to keep this short, so I apologize that it's been near 20 minutes. But anyway, um, I just wanted to encourage you in this, that now is the time. There is just this, um, I'm probably going to get the Greek word, is it is it kairos moment? The chronos is the like actual time, right? And kairos is set time. I think I got that right. Anyway, um, I really felt like this is one of those kairos moments where the Lord is saying, I'm giving you the invitation for breakthrough. You are my key to unlock it all. It's time to make it happen. Don't go running and hiding in the closet. It's time. It's time. It is time. All right. I'm just going to leave you guys with that. God bless you. If you guys have anything that you need some some intercession and some prayer over, please feel free to comment below. Um, I will love to um, partner with you to to speak um, whatever we need to speak to your situation, to pray over your situation. If you want to, you know, message me privately, you can do that as well. Um, anyway, God bless you guys and, um, have an amazing day. Bye-bye.